uh, most everybody here. But I am Kevin Murdoch, the Director of Robotic Surgery in Riverton Hospital. And it is a privilege to stand before you and talk about uh, what we have going on here at Riverton, robotic surgery. Um, we have waited and we have prepared for three years to get to this point. So it's been a, it's been a long journey, but worth it. <clears throat> now we have our new best friend, Leo. So Leo is short for Leo, Leonardo da Vinci, one of the um, Renaissance Italians. Intuitive Surgical, which is represented by our three individuals up here, basically, back in 1999, they named their robotic platform da Vinci. Why? Because of his study of human anatomy, development of automatons and robots. It was a perfect combination, okay? So now, <clears throat> I'm gonna do a shameless plug, okay? So on my YouTube video, you can see, on my YouTube channel, you can see this video. And it's the welcoming of Leo. The video is provided by Amy Rhodes, the video footage, and the music, I have to get this straight, the music is provided by John Williams and the Boston Pops Orchestra 2001 Space Odyssey. So, shameless plug, this is on my YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a happy crew. We rolled out the red carpet for our man, Leo. I don't know who this guy is, but I love him. He's on Loving <laughs> Leo. <laughs> Anybody know his name? John. His name is Glenn, and he was the truck driver. Oh, I love Glenn. So here he is. So this is Leo in his crates coming out of the truck. This is uh, the console. Now the console is out of its crate. I have to yell now because I get it on the music. This is the intuitive rep. I don't know his name, but he's doing the diagnostics to make sure the robot is working before he moves it. What's his name? Jeff. 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 So Leo joins his little buddy, the console. This is when we remove the old table to get rid of the old table. I was so excited. And this is the new table coming in. This is an integrated table that's used with the robot. This is Leo coming out of the elevator to the second floor. His victorious march down the hallway <laughs> towards operating room four. <laughs> There he is going into uh, the OR4. His console buddy is following him. And here he is in the in OR4 with all five components. And there's Justin Moreau touching the combat, and there's the table. And there's our group, so excited and happy. And Leo has his little bow tie on there, his red bow tie. Okay, now, so we have to give thanks, all right? So when I say your name, please stand, okay? Uh, we couldn't have done it <clears throat> without everybody that's involved. Um, so first, the OR team. Amy Rhodes, who's already standing, and Karen Weston. Okay? And you can sit down. Thank you for also afterwards. Central Processing, uh, Brandon Tibbs, I don't see him this year. He He's enjoying some family time. Okay, Brandon Tibbs, couldn't have done it without him. And most importantly, the technicians and nurses who put in the time to train on the system before going live. Alan Pearsall, who's going to be our uh, nurse coordinator of, this, of the training, pro I mean, of the program. Summer Labrum, <clears throat> Matthew Webb, Michelle Rendon, who I think is at a baseball game with her son. Uh, Regan Anjavirden, did I get that right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and Lisa Josie, but I don't see Lisa. No? Okay. She's you guys upstairs working hard. So, we're doing a case. Okay, you guys can, you guys can see. <laughs> All right, the C-suite team, Todd Newbar, Todd Newbert, uh, hospital administrator, who you've already met, Brian Pendleton, nurse administrator, uh, Jeff Huntington, is he here? No. Okay. Uh, Andrew Osman, all right, a Amber Spencer, okay, uh, Laura Klarman, Kim Danzi, okay. And we couldn't have done it without these three fine gentlemen here, Adam Stewart, <laughs> Lance Butler, stand all the way up, make that one short. Right. Just screw up. <clears throat> okay, round of applause for everybody. Oh, I forgot. Hi. My partner is Dr. Brock Bank. <laughs> it's not all about me. I'm Dr. Ellis John. Okay, now. Uh, Let's take a journey back in time, okay? 
This is a picture. Uh, this does not date me. All right, this is an old operating room theater. I did not train there, okay? So it's like candlelight. It's only standing, standing room only. This is where the gods of the past, uh, people like Bassini in the 19th century, McVeigh in the early 20th century, would have done surgery, okay? But you know what? It really hasn't gotten any better than that. Uh, so this is an opening on Harry Potter called a Lichtenstein. This was developed in 1984. And you see those metal instruments? That's what I was using in 1996. And if I was to do an open angle hernia repair today, I'd be using the same instruments. Very little innovation in open hernia surgery. Uh, and you can see this just a little piece of mesh. It's technically inadequate overlap for the hernia repair. And there's nerves behind every corner. And that can be a real problem with opening angle hernia repair. So now, let's enter into <clears throat> the virtual world. Who stands anymore? I don't, okay? I don't. You'll notice you know, the tech stands. Actually, I tell the tech to sit down on the chair when there's nothing going on. But you get lumbar support, which is very helpful for the old guys, okay? You're now in a 3D virtual world, okay? So this is uh, a collage of pictures of how to do an angle hernia repair. And what it's showing you is the under wrist instruments. You'll see the scissors, you'll see the uh, needle driver, you'll see the graspers. And the beauty of this is that the instruments do this, and they actually are better than your wrists, okay? So it allows you to be operating in the patient's abdomen uh, and not actually be in there by using your wrists, okay? Now, the camera is fascinating. This is um, what really makes it great. So this is a video uh, where I'm going to go from white light to near infrared light back to white light. With just a flick of a finger, you can change what spectrum of light you're in and you'll see everything that has bile in it light up green, okay? So this is dissecting out the cystic duct during gallbladder surgery. And now look at that. You just go to a flick of a rib, uh, finger and you're now looking at this Y formation, which is the bile ducts. So Todd talked about safety. This is the beauty of this because now you can do fluorescence guided imaging surgery, which is state of the art. Okay, the numbers, uh, it's impressive. Uh, in the last 20 years, over 10 million people have had robotic surgery uh, with Intuitive. And they're not just the only robotic system in the world, but that's 10 million for them. They've trained over 43,000 surgeons. They have 6,700 systems in 69 countries on six continents. And if I could get to Antarctica and be on the seventh continent, I'd be there, okay? Because that's my goal, is to do it on the seventh continent. Now, this is the amazing stat. Every 20 seconds, a surgeon starts a robotic case across the world. That's just incredible, okay. This is a slide that, uh, it's outdated, it's up to 2018, but I want to show you, the red and the, and the um, uh, purple there, or blue, uh, is urology and gynecology. They've been on board much longer than general surgery has for robotic surgery. But you'll see in 2014, you'll see exponential growth of general surgery in the United States. It's a renaissance for general surgeons. We have taken back the, the movements of our wrist uh, that conventional laparoscopic surgery has taken away from us. We have taken that back. It's a renaissance, okay? Now this is uh, intermountain numbers, okay? So leading up to 2014, you'll see uh, gynecology and urology are the black and the, and the uh, light gray there. Basically, they were on board already. 2014, you'll see the, the purple is where general surgery comes in. And then gynecology also gets an exponential growth. So from 2014 to 2018, you're starting to see this rise. I jumped in in 2018 and now contributing to that very steep exponential curve of the, um, of the numbers, okay? And then unfortunately the pandemic hit and you can see the numbers tailing off. Well, guess what's going to happen in 2022? The numbers are going to skyrocket. Why? Because Intuitive has now put uh, platforms in Alta View, American Fork, um, they've got a new one in St. George Regional, Layton, and of course here at Ripton. So the numbers are just going to skyrocket, okay? And Adam Stewart has a lot to do. Okay, yes you do. It's been around not everybody. Yeah, but you have a lot to do. Okay, <clears throat> you have to start somewhere. My index patient, uh, you gotta recruit somebody. You gotta tell someone, you're my first patient. I found a 79 year old Spanish professional cyclist. Well, he wasn't professional at the time, but he was professional back in uh, the 60s. He was physically fit. And I sat down and I spoke with his family and I said, I got this thing here called a robot. Let's do a hernia repair on you. And uh, they were sold. So after surgery, the patient had no bruise, no swelling, no pain, he used no narcotics, he was walking around, I couldn't even tell that he had, had surgery a week before. I was sold, I was on to really, I was really on to this. 
And I have to admit that my first case took me 74 minutes. And now I can do a hernia in 20 minutes, okay? So I was really bad back then with my times, but you have to start somewhere, okay? So what I did is I came in guns a blazing and said, Todd, we need a robot. We need a robot. I did 15 cases and I said, this is it. And I had all my intuitive guys behind me. We came in and I said, we have got to get a robot. And Todd acquiesced after three years. No, I'm just kidding. It was, it was, it was Intermountain system. We had to be patient. We got it. It took us three years to get in here. Okay. So, um, now that we have Leo, uh, our first week was um, April, what day was it? April 4th. April 4th. We did 13 cases our first week. Phenomenal. Not a glitch in the system. We had prepared, prepared, prepared for this moment. Did 13 cases. So general surgery at Riverton is uh, full steam ahead. Uh, we're getting our first gynecology cases uh, in May. And we have a pipeline of gynecologists that are going to be getting credential. We have yet to catch the big fish of urology, but I, I think we, are, we might be having some of your time in the summertime. And the ultimate goal is to provide 24-7 robotic service, which we haven't done yet because we still have to get everybody trained up. But other intermountain hospitals are now providing 24-7, and that's our ultimate goal. But what has been accomplished, we are now providing state-of-the-art robotic surgery for the South Valley patients, and they don't have to go somewhere else to get state-of-the-art surgery. Now, another shameless plug. Okay, so this is not me doing a hernia repair. So uh, I'm going to show the video and you'll get to see the dexterity of the endo wrist. So this is a preperitoneal hernia repair. The mesh is in its place. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to anchor it with three sutures, okay? And you'll get to see the dexterity of these instruments. Now this is sped up three times. It's not, it's not uh, normal speed. Um, so you can see how I'm passing the suture back and forth just effortlessly, okay? And it has scissors built in there, and you just go back and forth, back and forth, and you can do this uh, within seconds. And then uh, for this type of hernia repair, the hardest stitch is the one that's going to be, I'm going to show you here, it's that Cooper's ligament where you go down, and it's so hard to get the angles down there with conventional laparoscopic surgery. But with this, it just makes it easy. It makes it easy. <clears throat> And then uh, the next sequence will be, um, now we're closing the peritoneal flag. So what, what you'll see is the hands are just working as if you were just doing a project on the bench right in front of you. And these instruments are just making it so easy. And it's all precision driven. You can put the stitch exactly where you want it. You very rarely have to take the stitch out and try and throw it again, whereas a laparoscopic surgery, if I was trying to do this laparoscopic, I would have just said, forget it. Give me the, give me the tacker and let's just get on with the case because I can't do it anymore. So this just is so, it's almost effortless how easy this is now. And you notice there's no blood. It's, it's almost bloodless surgery. It's amazing. Okay, there's, uh, so I've had plenty of shameless plugs. Okay, so that's it. That is it. So that concludes my presentation. Uh, I want to give everybody an applause for <laughs>